Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, let's talk about sends, buses, and auxiliary channels. For some of us more advanced users, this might seem a little basic, but I think it's really important. In the last couple updates, we've had some significant changes related to these three, and for a lot of Logic users, sends, buses, and aux channels can actually be kind of intimidating. I really think it's more related to the words and the terminology than the actual concept. So let's dig into this. First, what is a send, what is a bus, and what is an aux channel? Why do we use it? What's the point? Well, let's peel it back a bit. Think about the very famous Nintendo video game character, Super Mario. One way that Super Mario was able to travel from different levels and different worlds was via pipes. You jump on a pipe, you press down, he enters the pipe, and then he spit out somewhere else. And that's exactly what these three concepts do for us in our Logic projects. Sometimes we want to send the audio from one of our tracks through a bus, which is the piping, to another channel where we can affect it further, usually with reverb or delay. Imagine that you have a project with 10, 15, 30 different tracks. Now you could put Space Designer on every single track in your session, but that's not really the most efficient use of your max resources. Space Designer is pretty heavy handed with CPU, and very often you might run into system overload messages. So instead we can take those 10, 15, or 30 tracks and send it to one instance of Space Designer and then adjust the relative levels or send levels to Space Designer to get the perfect blend of reverb. So let's dig into the mixer here. You can see right on this guitar track that we have the send field. And if we click on it, we're treated to a lot, but let's just focus on the buses and you have bus one through 256, and I'm just gonna select bus one. What's going to happen is, is the send is the entrance to the pipe, the bus is the pipe, and once we click on bus one, suddenly an auxiliary channel named aux one is created. Perfect. If I set this to a stereo track, and I'm gonna place space designer on this aux channel. And the goal is, is I'm gonna take this guitar track and I'm gonna to start to boost the send level so that we hear more and more reverb. I don't necessarily want my track to be affected with Space Designer entirely. I wanna keep it dry, but I wanna blend in some reverb. And that's the perfect use for buses, sends, and auxiliary channels. So let's take a listen to this Apple loop and I'll start dialing up the send level, which means we'll start introducing more sound to the Space Designer track. And I'll even call it SD for Space Designer. Okay, let's take a listen. And just like that, you can hear that there is now reverb thanks to the send. It's like the faucet in your kitchen. As you turn one of the handles, water starts to come out, and the more you turn it, the more water continues to come out. And by dialing up the send level, we're introducing more signal to this separate Space Designer channel. Okay, easy peasy, right? Send is the entrance, bus is the piping, and the auxiliary channel is the final destination. But of course, we have more options beyond this. Let's click on our send one, and we can see there's a variety of options, but let's focus on these three, post pan, post fader, and pre fader. Now, what do these mean? Let's start with post pan. It stands to reason that if we adjust the fader of this guitar track or the panning of the guitar track, we probably want that to be reflected in reverb or delay. It's not necessarily always the case, but we may want that. So if I dramatically reduce the level of this track, I probably want the reverb to be relative and dramatically dropped as well. And the same thing with the panning, if I adjust the guitar to the left side of the pan, I probably want the guitar to sound like it's coming from the left side of the space. So let's take a listen and let's make some adjustments. Perfect. Now, sometimes you don't really care about the panning. Maybe you just want the guitar to be heard from all directions of the room, but we really just care about the fader and the relative level of the space designer. Well, perfect. Let's pick post fader. And now our panning won't matter. Doesn't matter if I pan it to the left or right, we won't hear it change in the reverb, but the fader movement will be changed.
You can hear the guitar panning, but you hear the reverb is still coming from both sides of the Space Designer channel. But the fader movement is adjusted relative to the fader of this track. Perfect. Now, in some cases, you might not at all want your panning or fader adjustments to make any sort of discernible change to the reverb or aux channel. In this case, we use pre-fader. The panning, no matter where I pan this, won't matter, and the fader won't change as well. Just take a listen. At this point, it only depends on the level set for this particular Space Designer channel or the send level and how much we're sending to this Space Designer track. And that's totally up to you. You probably want your track to be sent full blast to Space Designer, and then you can adjust within just this aux channel. This is perfect for something like a drum kit where you want to set the overall reverb and you don't want any sort of discernible changes to occur as you adjust faders and panning within the drums. Cool. Perfect. Now we have three different options to manage the different ways that we send audio to our different aux channels. But there's even more further since recent updates. And now we have something called sends on faders. If we go up to the top of the mixer here and we click on this power button, suddenly we have sends on faders and the fader here has turned yellow. What's beautiful about sends on faders is instead of having to deal with this dial here, which doesn't necessarily have as fine resolution as the fader, we can actually adjust the fader, which has finer resolution, maybe feels a little more intuitive. So you can see that as I drive up the fader, we can watch it drive up on the dial here as well. So perfect. It's just an alternate way of managing your send levels. And then once you've set the perfect send level, you can just turn off sends on faders and everything's as it should be. Now, perhaps you have a big mix and you're about to send all of your tracks to an output such as your headphones, which you can do. If you click on the send, go to output, we have mono and stereo options. And I only have a couple right now. Let's assume that 19 and 20 is what I picked. It's my headphone output. And I want to make sure that all of the send levels are exactly the same as the fader levels in my session because I'm sending to a set of headphones for someone who's going to be performing with the track. Easy. If we click on our send and then go down to copy fader to send, watch that. All of a sudden, the send level has adjusted. So if I turn this all the way down, click on the send, copy fader to send, you can see that the send level has been dropped all the way to zero as well. So if we have, you know, 15 tracks and we've set the level for each to different values, we can then select all those tracks and then go to copy fader to send. And it's been copied right across the board. If we click on send on faders here, we can see that those adjustments have been made. Perfect. So there's further fine tuning and ability within sends, buses, and aux channels. One last thing I want to dig into, independent pan when it comes to sends. Sometimes you may have a guitar track and you want to pan that guitar track if we, you know, set this to pre-fader, but I want the send to be panned to the opposite direction within the reverb. Well, that's super easy. If I have this set to independent pan and turn on send on faders, you can see right here, let's drive up the signal and let's take a listen to how this sounds. So as you can see, if we turn off sends on faders, my guitar track is panned all the way to the left, but with sends on faders on, the signal being sent to the reverb is panned all the way to the right. It's completely separate from the original channel. You get to have your cake and eat it too. You have all the versatility that you might possibly want. You can send your tracks to other aux channels. You can send your tracks to outputs through your interface. You're able to adjust based on either post-pan, post-fader, or pre-fader. And you can even adjust with sends on faders if you want something a little more intuitive and finer in resolution and adjust based on independent panning. So your panning is no longer tethered to where the track's panning is. There's a lot to uncover here, but I think you'll find that sends, buses, and aux channels is not a very difficult concept. It's just a lot of terminology. It's a little bit to think about until you get used to it. From there, it's pretty easy to navigate. So I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, as always, 
I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new posts, and new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.